You know, we got a lot of new guys, um, but we have a core group of guys that know like what we're doing and what the expectation is, and, and it's it's amazing as we go you know, through some of these walkthroughs and seeing uh, how much recall we have of what we do. It, it is night and day, and some of the looks that we're getting on offense. If we would have seen these a year ago, it would have looked like you know it looked like a circus. I mean, and right now we actually have guys that you know that look like they they know our system and what we're trying to do and and it really does look like we're gonna you know we're gonna move forward towards that second year uh, that second year jump I know uh, can you talk a little about uh, the big 12 uh, maybe showing a lot of looks that you just didn't see in the Pac-12 and even you know during the time Washington State what kind of offenses are you expecting to see in the big 12 that maybe for the fan would look different from what you used to in the Pac-12 a lot more 12 personnel uh, less spread out less uh, putting the ball, you know, uh, or pushing the ball down the field, um, you know, like you see some of the teams that we played this year, and, and you know, it's kind of an anomaly, right? Just with all the the quality quarterback play, it was hands down maybe the best quarterback conference in the last 20 years of college football, and, and uh, you know, teams were more willing to, you know, really stretch the field, and you know, we, you know, we, you know, Oklahoma State's a great example. They had the Dope Walker Award winner who was right on our field, you know, and that's what they want to do. It's going to be, um, I think it's going to be a lot more ball control, a lot more uh, possession oriented, time of possession oriented, um, a lot, a lot more analytic, analytically um, involved games. I mean, in, in terms of teams that just have more talent than each other, I, I don't believe that this is, that's going to be uh, this league. I think there's going to be a league full of a lot of evenly matched teams, so it's going to come down to, you know, styles and and clock management and managing field position. And whereas I think the Pac-12 the last two years has been who's going to score more points. Uh, we look at the defensive line. And I'm really fortunate to have uh, Prince Dorba cutting Smith back. I know Elijah O'Neal really showed a lot of flashes toward, towards the end of the year. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel uh, a guy like what Roman Petrie can be maybe a mainstay in that uh, two deep at defensive line? You know, I don't know yet. I mean, I, I know Roman has a lot of a uh, lot of talent, but we just feel like that position group over overall. Um, like we, we've we brought guys in like Roman, like like. Uh, like Justin Watley, um, like you know, that, a guy that can play inside, outside. You know, we're we're gonna we're gonna move Coop around. Um, you know, he's played a lot of edge here, started a lot of games at edge in years past. We're gonna put him back out at edge, but be able to move him inside at times. So, you know, having that flexibility and the depth in that room is gonna it's gonna create a lot of competition, and we're gonna be a lot more efficient. Um, in our execution at that position this year because of that competition and because of the different skill sets that room brings. In a defensive tackle, obviously, the Sean Mallory leaves some uh, pretty big shoes to fail. I know CJ Fight uh, did uh, play well as a freshman. How do you see uh, the competition there? Well, I mean, number one, just talking about CJ, we're, we're really expecting him to make that second year jump, too. I mean, talking about a true freshman that came in and really by, you know, the fifth game of the season, he became a mainstay for us up front. And he's able to you know, not only hold his own, but sometimes, you know, show flashes of uh, being a dominant player, you know, as a true freshman, you know, right off the bus. <laughs> and uh, um, so we're expecting him to make that jump. He's gotten bigger and stronger and really excited about his development. Um, but, you know, then again, you know, guys that, that have been here, guys like Trist Tristan Monday, guys that we brought in, uh, like, you know, uh, like, like Jacob Gagaika and J.P. Dieter and, you know, talked about Justin Watley and, yeah. And, uh, you know, we have some young guys, too, you know, Landon Thomas and Kyra Gorda. And, and uh, you know, I know I'm missing somebody in, in there. I just – but off the top of my head, I mean, we just – that's the one thing that you'll notice about our defensive line is we're much bigger. We're much more – we're a much bigger and more physical group than we were last year. And I know it's a very, very deep defensive line. around the state in 22 defensive linemen when you back to start. That's really going to allow you to practice harder. Something like Kenny, I know, mentioned a lot of times was really absent last year just because of the lack of depth. Uh, say that again, just uh, rephrase yeah, that. The, the, the lack of depth uh, last year, not mm -hmm. only the defensive line, but other positions, really did not allow you to practice as hard mm -hmm. as you wanted to. Now, starting spring practice, just on the defensive line alone, 22 as defensive linemen, that really allows you to practice at a whole different level. 100%. And, it, like, I mean, Kenny says it all the time up, up front. It always starts up front. It starts. And you look at the best teams in the country, the teams that have uh, the, the biggest and the best 
offense and defensive lines and also the depth because the more depth you have in those positions, the more guys that you're going to rep. And really, those are developmental positions. I mean, the, the defensive line, you can't just – the C.J. fighting is an all-in way. You know, if, if true freshmen don't come in and normally don't get an opportunity to play as true freshmen. Um, and – but, you know, that's a position guys just have to get comfortable. they got to get bigger and stronger. Uh, you know, 18, 19 – you know, guys have to get used to playing against 21, 22, and 23-year-old guys. And, and and when you start getting that old man strength, that, that makes a difference. So um, having that depth and being healthy in those two areas is, is critical for us in our development. It looks like linebacker. It almost, almost seems like a brand new group uh, from last year with uh, guys like uh, you know Cyrus Smiasa, uh, Keyshawn Elliott, Jordan Crook. Um, what are you expecting to see different from that group than you didn't see last year? Uh, just more depth more depth and we brought in a lot of experience. I mean, all three of those guys played a lot of football. They played as much football as the guys that we have coming back and, and Tate and, and Caleb um, and then excited about, uh, you know, Kavion and, and crew and their development. So it's it's uh, it's going to be a lot of competition right there. And it's really, it, it's, you know, may the best men win. And, and it's not, you know, two. It's, hey, can we get, you know, four or five ready to be, either used in specific situations or, hey, if if they're all good enough to have a role and they're all dialed in like that because our linebackers have to be leaders, they have to not have off days, they have to be the most consistent group you know, on our defense in terms of bringing it every single day uh, because they're, they're the guys that this whole defense looks to to get you know, our fronts and our calls closed and, and, and communicated and you know, they're the centerpiece to our defense. So it's going to be exciting because we've got a lot of talent and, and a lot of guys who played a lot of good football in that room. Let's talk about your baby, the safety group. Uh, yeah. I think maybe the best 2024 signing, quotation marks, is Xavier Alpha, mm -hmm. who, didn't, who didn't play last year. You know, him, you know, Shamari coming back, you know, Montana Warren showing a lot of uh, flashes. Yeah. You know, Miles Roser, you know, coming from New Mexico, uh, really had an outstanding year there last year. Yeah. Are you expecting also this safety group uh, to be one that's looking to you know, step it up a few notches? I'm really excited about this group, and what's cool is it's, it's a group that balances each other out. Um, one man's strength is another man's weakness. Um, guys, uh, you know, it's going to allow us to play different personnel packages and, you know, Defense is all about getting your best players on the field at the most opportune moments. And there's going to be a lot of competition there. And you could literally call Xavier Alfred's a transfer because he hasn't played a snap for us yet. And, and I'm, excited to see, I'm excited to see what he can do when, you know, when the whistle blows and it's for real. Because you know, he, he's, a natural, he's a natural leader and he's a guy that um, he brings it every day. He's super consistent and um, he never has an off day and his teammates love him. So, you know, you know, I hope he can take a leadership role, but there's other guys in that group too who played a lot of football. And Shamari Simmons is, you know, he's the quiet killer. I mean, he's, he's a, there's not a tougher guy in America that is on a football field anywhere, physically or, or emotionally. I mean, he's, a, he brings it every single day. He's an incredible leader. You know, we brought in, um, you know, um, you know, a couple other really good uh, transfers too. So we got a lot of competition. I mean, it's a, it's going to be fun to see how this all kind of plays out and who brings it every day this spring. I don't know if there's more competition at cornerback maybe than other positions, but it seems like maybe there's this really a lot wide open. The Ed Woods, the only proven guy mm -hmm. coming back. you got um, transfers like uh, Javon Robinson, uh, LaTerrence Wells. Keith Abney, freshman, showed a lot uh, last year. Um, what, what do you expect them from that group and also the Nickelback group? I mean, I'm telling you, you know, just that we're really excited about that group. And I'm not, I don't get out. And the reason is, is just, there's just a different. There's a there's a mindset in that room right now. They just want to know it, and they want to be the. Every one of those guys want to wants to be the smartest guy in the room, and and guys like Ed and Keith are really, you know, they're driving that. But you know, I coached Javen up at, at Washington State, and Javen, you know, he's used to what we do, and he's very familiar with our system, and and I would say he was. There was nobody more talented of the corners that I had up at Washington State. And I think there's three of them that are going to make it into NFL camps in the last two years. And and he might have been the most talented one. He was just the youngest guy. So um, he knows it. He knows the expectation, what the standard is. And then you bring in a guy like LT. And LT is a guy who's you know, played at LSU. He's coached incredibly. The guy has a business mindset. He's played against and had a practice against you know the best receivers in the country, maybe the best receiving core in the country last year, every single day. So he's seen the best. 
Um, he's really football savvy and smart. Just this group overall is going to allow us to do um, really run our whole package, and, and it's going to be clean. And and again, competition drives performance. Just this is what it is. I mean, you can you can give a guy you know a, a position, and it can be just be his. He's not going to respond like the guy that knows if he doesn't bring it that day, he could lose his spot. And that's right now for our whole back seven is something that's driving every guy. And I like to tell our guys, like, it's not what you do when we're around. It's not making it to every workout. It's not making it to every class, doing well. It's not making it to every training table, going to every training room on time. That's not what's going to separate you. It's what you're doing no one's watching. And this group is really, and I've, it's, it's no different a message I've given in the last year, but this group, because of the competition, the depth we have, I really think at every position, it's gonna, it, the cream's gonna rise to the top, and, and we're really excited about it. And as far as Nickelback, I mean, how, how do you first see at least the initial two deep going into spring practice? Whew. It's a three deep. I mean, it really is. I mean, you got Mason Williams, who's a returner. You got Cole Martin, who you know played played a lot last year at Oregon, and and um, he is the prototype nickel that you want. Um, and then you got Keith Abney, who can play inside, outside. He's smart. He's big. He's physical. You literally can put him anywhere. I'll learn the position in a matter of time. Um, so right now it's kind of a three-horse race there. But there's other guys that could, and some of those some of those young guys uh, that came in, um, like you know Chris Johnson, Tony and Cuba, and Rodney Bimage are all in the cornerback room. That you could see maybe one of those guys down the road moving into one of those safety nickel positions. Last question: um, uh, What would your um, checklist look like? You know, at the end of spring practice, obviously from the obvious to staying healthy, that you would say this was successful spring practice. Just number one, that um, we really established a solid, solid two deep, um, and at critical positions like defensive tackle, maybe a fifth, um, including at linebacker and at safety. Uh, and so, if I can get a fifth at every one of those positions, I think we're going to be really good. And really, the key is is just making sure that you know that two deep is healthy.